Hey everyone, in the news this week, it seems that Liz Truss is going to be the one challenging the status quo, and hopefully she'll be challenging to learn some new chords or release a new album. Also, one of Princess Diana's cars was up for sale this week. The 1985 Escort sold for 600,000, as compared to Prince Andrew's 1983 Escort, who settled for 12 million. And Mikhail Gorbachev passed away. He was the first Soviet leader to have been born in the USSR. And it says a lot about Soviet manufacturing that the first time they tried a Soviet-made leader, it managed to destroy the country within six years. But anyway, talking about incompetence and people actively working to undermine their own country, this week I thought we'd shine a light on how the migrant situation is playing out in America, specifically the issue of how the media and the Democrats think things are going now that they can't blame Donald Trump for everything. President Trump was of course vilified for separating families on the border and putting children in cages, although that policy started under the Obama administration when Joe Biden of all people oversaw much of the operational part of the policy. Then later Joe Biden became president and to his credit he's old enough that he probably has first hand experience of the Mexican war of the 1840s. Anyway, he has continued to build pieces of the border wall, although the unofficial policy has just been to let migrants do what they want, safe in the knowledge that it's all thousands of miles away and only affecting places like you know, Texas, where they never vote for Joe Biden anyway. It's all very progressive and virtual signalling, sitting in ivory towers in Martha's Vineyard, calling anybody who complains a racist. These are the same wealthy white people who call themselves progressive, yet call the police when someone ethnic is seen trying to play a round of golf at their course. The same, quote, open-minded people who regularly make the profoundly racist claim that migrants are needed to do menial jobs like clean toilets or work as bellhops as if they're living in the Deep South circa 1920. In recent months, so a fairly interesting policy change has happened, though, when Texas and a number of other places started handing out free bus tickets so that migrants could escape the supposed hell holes of Trump country and travel to the sanctuary cities in the north. In the past couple of months, tens of thousands of people have travelled to the likes of Chicago or New York, where their diversity can be celebrated. And that's gone down a bit as well as you can imagine amongst the folks who never actually thought they'd have to back up their words with deeds. In Washington, D.C., the politicians have called for the National Guard to be sent in to help, whilst in New York, the policy has been to put everybody up in hotels. Fairly cushy. The cost of that, by the way, was recently forecast at $300 million, all whilst the city faces a budget crisis worse than Nicolas Cage, Dennis Rodman and Johnny Depp all rolled into one. The mayor of Chicago probably won the award for hypocrisy, though, after calling Governor Abbott racist because he sent migrants to a city that's openly demanded for an open border policy. There's so many brass necks on display that it's a real shame they can't sell the brass and use the money to fix all the problems caused by their shamelessly and equally useless COVID rules from the last couple of years. As I say, though, it couldn't happen to more deserving people. Anyway, see you next week. Please like, subscribe.